Join us now to talk about the risk in commercial real estate. Scott Reckler, CEO of RXR uh, Realty. You've pointed out in the past, Scott, that you have a you know decade of basically zero rates, and there's going to be liabilities and imbalances and, and all the things that, that we're seeing. But you've also pointed out that this is not a new, uh, a new movie that we're watching here. And in the past, time can, can sort of give us enough uh, leeway to work these things out. Do you still think that about commercial real estate? There's going to be a lot of it stuff comes due over the next three years, but yeah, no. you what, uh, extend and pretend or whatever it's called? Yeah, I, I don't think extend and pretend is the right concept. And, you know, I, I think the the point uh, that Jamie made um, is right, that if the fundamentals get worse, things are going to get more challenging. But I would argue, frankly, that even if the fundamentals um, stay strong, we still have a, a problem in the fact that there's been literally hundreds of billions of dollars, uh, trillions of dollars, frankly, of commercial real estate that's been financed in a low to near zero interest rate environment over the last decade that now needs to be refinanced in these more normalized higher interest rates. And when you do that, the borrower uh, can't get as much proceeds as they did in the past. And so we're seeing this throughout the country in our in our lending business. And it's you know, these are borrowers and lenders that were, frankly, uh, conservative and responsible, 60 percent loan to values. Uh, but when you have the interest rates spike up as they have, and let's say cap rates, which is what's their value on, goes from 4 percent to 5 percent, which brings down the value. And the uh, the loan to value goes from 60 percent to 50 percent. If someone bought a hundred million dollar uh, multifamily building, for example, and invested 40 million dollars of equity and took a 60 million dollar loan, Today, they'd have to write off half their equity, so $20 million gone, and the only the loan they'd get would be $40 million, not $60 million. So they have to actually go back to their investors and say, by the way, your investment's worth half of what it was before, and I need $20 million to be able to refinance this loan. And that's happening across the board. And you saw it, you know, the data is looking backwards, right? When you look forward through the window, you see how much of this there is. I mean, there was record level of uh, multifamily investments in the uh, 2021, almost $350 billion. That was a lot of it financed short term because they thought rents were going up and now are gonna have to deal with the day of reckoning of these higher interest rates. And and it's become pro-cyclical in the sense that the, particularly since the credit crisis, and this is where it's really a slow moving train wreck has picked up speed because the the, the banks um, are being told by their, the regulators, by their, by their shareholders, by the boards, you know, reduce your commercial real estate exposure. And, and they do that painting all commercial real estate with the same brush, which means they want their existing book of business to be refinanced, which would mean that there needs to be another bank out there that's willing to take that exposure to refinance it, which isn't what's happening. And so you're going to have the plumbing get clogged, which can create a much more pronounced, challenging uh, situation, particularly for the regional banks, which had a heavy exposure and concentration to regional, uh, to uh, commercial real estate. The last time you were on, you, you mentioned a lot of these same things, and, and that's why I said extend and pretend, because you said the private sector can work it out eventually. You, are you expect, Are you more bearish now? Do you think there's going to be a, a horrific day of reckoning now that takes some banks down, like, like uh, Jamie Dimon said? Yeah, that, uh, again, you know, if you go back and look at the savings and loan uh, situation we had, I mean, I think this is going to bear out like that. And the way you can prevent it from being um, as, you know, worse than it otherwise would be is make sure there's liquidity in the market. And right now, the big challenge is we don't have liquidity uh, in the market. And so the way that the private sector can actually work this out is you need to incent banks, insurance companies to make new loans today, good loans today, um, and, and, and actually differentiate them from legacy loans, right? If you're making a loan today, you're making it with and with clear transparency of the macro environment, the high interest rate environment. These are going to be the best loans you can make. We're making them as much as we can. This is one of these back up the truck moments because there's such illiquidity in the market. But you need to have the system um, encouraging banks to do this. And frankly, if they did that, even regional banks can make these loans. And as they make them, they'll get higher returns. They can actually afford to pay the deposits and they'll strengthen their business as we go through that. So that's where if there's if there's any place where we could, uh, you know, the regulators could be helpful and let the markets function and clear the plumbing um, is to actually focus on new loans 
and the new loans then will work out the old loans. And that means people are going to take losses, right? Banks will take losses, investors will take losses, but that's the nature of capitalism. But we need to make sure there's actually liquidity in the market so capitalism can function. But what are regulators supposed to do? Tell banks to, to or tell lenders to to not worry about? It? I don't understand how it's a regulator. I mean, this is well, I'll mean, give you one simple one simple place to handle this, Joe. Right, right now, if you're looking at a bank and then you're a shareholder, you're a regulator. You look at a commercial real estate and saying, "Wow, they have 18 percent of their their um, commercial real estate exposure." would say that they segregated and put out regulations to say segregate legacy loans that were made in this low interest rate environment that are likely to have challenges of being refinanced and new loans. And then when they look at that numbers, they say, okay, you have 10% legacy loans and 5% newly originated loans, which were originated and obviously healthier. And so you're not gonna be penalized um, for having new loans because those are good loans. And that will help set up the system that then people will bring equity in and new loans will be originated by other banks to then refinance their book of business of legacy loans, right? So even the surrogation of that um, and the clarity of a legacy loan versus a new loan, I think, will, will go a long way to enabling the market to, to be able to function more effectively.